faith-based organizations like the American Friends Service Committee do quiet, long-term, and impactful peace building that is grounded in values of justice and equity. In times of crisis, like the COVID-19 pandemic, AFSC was able to leverage deep relationships with local communities, local wisdom and knowledge to not just adapt, but offer examples to others of systemic transformation that is possible. The Farmers to Food Banks program shows us how in the midst of crisis lies an opportunity to transform entrenched and ineffectual systems. The American Friends Service Committee is a nonprofit organization that was started over 100 years ago in 1917 by Quakers who wanted to put their faith in action. And it continues to today with programs all over the world, including New Mexico, which is where I am in Albuquerque. We support and accompany historic and land-based communities in New Mexico. And the ways that we do that include farmer training, technical support, infrastructure development for farms, policy advocacy, and community organizing. In March of 2020, a farmer stopped by. We had worked with this farmer for over a decade. He had graduated from our farmer training program. And then I thought to ask him, you know, are, are you worried about the pandemic? And I was really stunned when he said, yeah, I think I'm going to lose my farm. I can't afford to harvest and wash and package when I don't have anywhere for the food to go. The small farms that we're working with in New Mexico, a lot of their markets were the farmer's markets. It was also restaurant sales, which had to be shut down during COVID. And at the same time, I was hearing about how the food bank was having for the first time a warehouse of just empty shelves. We had a farmer in a small village that was driving home with her boys one day and she saw a long line of cars and wondered what was happening during COVID because there was no car congregating, there were no events. And as she was passing them, she recognized her neighbors. And eventually she saw that the long line of cars were going to her local food pantry. And it just really affected her to understand how many of her neighbors had to use the food pantry to eat. And they were seeing a decrease in donations because about 40% of the donations that go to our largest food bank in New Mexico come from grocery stores. And there was panic buying happening. They also rely a lot on volunteer labor. A large group of the volunteers are retired folks who are at risk of getting COVID. So they were losing labor and donation. And we had to cancel our Cesar Chavez celebration. And Cesar Chavez is an important part of the social justice food movement and the story of the farm workers. So I just had this thought of like, well, I could use that funds, buy his food and donate it to the food bank. And that's how it started was we were able to raise the funds at AFSC to buy food from small sustainable farms to keep them economically viable through the pandemic and get that food where it was most needed, which was our food bank. We were able to support 30 small scale families farms in 18 months. And we provided more than 20,000 pounds of organic local food to our food banks. We had a farmer tell us that she did not have to lay off any of her workers and she was able to keep them on at living wages because she knew she could count on selling to us every week. We had so many farmers tell us that we were their favorite customer. They just love the idea that their food was going to their neighbors, to their children's classmates, to their relatives, like to the people who really needed it. The food banks and the shelters and pantries we provided the food to told us they had never had such high quality food. You know, when I would come in with this gorgeous, you know, carrots, potatoes, garlic, kale, salad, tomatoes, and during COVID, which is eating healthy, it was a way to try to keep yourself safe, was to keep your, your body healthy. So we began sharing what we were doing and we got such a beautiful response from people all over the country who began sending in donations so we could continue to buy the food. And then of course, the, the county government heard about it and wanted to use their CARES Act funds with us. There were policy groups that came to us that wanted to learn more about it to think about food policy. We had several um, folks in other cities ask how to duplicate it in their city. We even were contacted by FEMA so they could understand what we were doing. So it was great to have these like private support from individuals and foundations and then this public support from our local government. So the U.S. Department of Agriculture um, heavily subsidizes large agribusinesses like cattle, corn, soy. And so that makes their products a lot cheaper than what you can get from a local sustainable family farm. And the idea was that the Department of Ag felt like the larger the farm, the larger the subsidy, with the thought that they're feeding more people. So these small family farms, that makes it really hard for them to be economically viable in this industrial food system. The mega farms often are using pesticides, chemicals, they're using monocropping, and those unfortunately are major factors in driving climate change and health problems. 
The corn farmers are creating high fructose corn syrup, which can lead to diabetes and obesity. And they usually exploit farm workers. That's a real issue in the food system too. Also, corporations are really involved in the food bank system. So if they have excess food or food waste, they have to pay to dispose of that, but they could just take it to the food bank and have it redistributed, which on the surface sounds like a really good idea, but there's been issues around like how corporations are using that for a profit-driven model. And the food bank, again, can't afford to buy from local farms because of that subsidy changes the, the price point for a big ag versus a, a small farmer. And so, yeah, this opening with, with Farm to Food Bank during COVID, we'd love to share this as a proof of concept. The small family farm is that we work with at AFSC are using sustainable methods that don't drive climate change. They're family farms that are on historic land and using the water in ways that's in harmony with the earth and traditional ways that go back through indigenous and ancestral knowledge and it reaching people regardless of income. It's reaching people that just need access to good food. Also at AFSC, we take a social justice lens to our work. And so we're not looking for just a short-term emergency response. We'd love to see it exist beyond the pandemic. We do need to move back to small-scale local agriculture in the face of climate change. It's better for the economy. It's better for people's health. I mean, there's just so many things that the food system could move to. The reason this program was so successful was because of the hard work of all of those family farms that continued to farm during a pandemic and who wanted to partner with us to get their food to people who most needed it. The other key piece was the food banks and the food pantries that continued to do that frontline work and had to adapt. And so we got to play one role in helping to bridge those two, but really it was all of us making that happen. And I'm just so grateful for that collective work. For each farm that we purchased from, we got an invoice from them of what type the food and how much we were paying and how many pounds. And then with the food pantry and food bank, they were giving us data back about what percentage of their food donations for the year had come from our program and who it was reaching. So some of it was quantitative data, but there was a lot of qualitative. We got testimonies from the farmers and the food bank volunteers and staff about the impact. So that was really important for our collection. And it was also important for us in partnering with local government that they had that transparency of what we were spending, who it was supporting, including geographically where they were located. So we were working mostly in central and northern New Mexico, which is where our network of small scale family farms are. And we're planning a celebration to bring everyone together, all of the farmers who participated, the food pantry volunteers and staff, and then AFSC, so that we can all celebrate and honor the impact it had. And so that everyone gets back the data that we've collected so they can see what we've done as a community. As the pandemic sort of subsides, and we've been doing this for 18 months. They're really interested in knowing more than just their piece. Like how are they part of the greater system? And they're some of the best advocates then for like why this is a good shift in the food system.